thank you very much, everyone, um, for your time this afternoon. And I'm sorry for the, the technical difficulties getting us uh, getting us organized. Um, but just wanted to start off and wish everyone a happy Nursing Week, a happy Better Together Month, um, and a wacky Wednesday for uh, the staff on three. I don't normally dress like this, but um, I look a bit silly now that a lot of our colleagues have changed. But uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, no, it was a good sight this morning. Um, so just on behalf of uh, Juliana uh, and Kathy, who's unable to be with us today, I uh, just would like to welcome everyone to 3A Medicine. Uh, I'd like to welcome back our facilitators for these sessions, Diane Godkin, our Director of Ethics, Jeffrey Brown, our Spiritual Care Practitioner, uh, and Rachel, our wellness, uh, wellness Specialist. So thank you again for it. And we'd like to, uh, uh, very excited to welcome a very, uh, several special guests. Uh, firstly, Catherine Hayward-Murray, our Chief Nursing Executive and Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I don't usually get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Angela Cooper Brathwaite, the president of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. Welcome, Dr. Brathwaite. I also like to welcome uh, Natalia Kusendova, the member of provincial parliament for uh, Mississauga Center, and I think she's an emergency room nurse as well. Natalia, yes, welcome. Um, and then I uh, would also like to welcome um, Shannon Meyer, the director of the medicine program, uh, as well as Shelly, the um, director of the professional Hey, Shelly. Hi, Shannon. Okay, so uh, before turning it over um, uh, and introducing our guests more formally, um, just wanted to um, share a bit about why we're here this afternoon with everyone uh, and provide a bit of an overview for our next hour. So, um, as we all know, staff engagement and wellness is something that's really important to all of us uh, here at Trillium Health Partners, and in particular now with what we're going through. Um, you know, we all have um, high level, sorry, challenges that we're working through, and so, um, uh, and, and so staff wellness is something that's very important. Um, so, um, as the manager of the unit, and I know uh, with some of our leaders here, um, we, I think we all, we need, have an active role to play um, in, in the wellness um, of our teams. And so over the past several months, uh, several weeks here on 3A, what we've done is um, host a series of wellness activities. Um, and, and specifically on Wednesday afternoons, what we've done is we're calling our wellness and resiliency round. And um, uh, what these are is in advance, we'll identify a question uh, or a topic um, related to COVID-19 that's you know, on, the, uh, on the minds of our staff. Um, we're going to go away from having you know, 80 staff here on 3A Medicine having individual experience with that particular challenge to having a conversation about it and, and having um, support from our, our colleagues in employee health, um, ethics, and spiritual care. Um, the goal of these conversations really is to support one another um, and, and do, uh, you know, just even a little bit to make some of these challenges, um, uh, you know, a bit easier for our team. That's something that's really, really important. Um, so, uh, in terms of the next uh, 50 minutes or so, uh, what I'd like to do is, is um, uh, do a formal introduction of all of our guests. Um, then we'll um, talk a little bit about the topic for today. Uh, we have an exercise that's going to be led by Jeff as well. Really excited for that, Jeff. Thank you for coming. Uh, and then we'll um, conclude with some thank you and some final thoughts. Okay. okay? Uh, but first, but really just want to say, reiterate again, I'm very appreciative of everyone uh, taking the time this afternoon. Um, so our first introduction, just would like to turn on Chief Dr. Well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I don't want to take too much time because I know that we're running a bit delayed, but uh, a couple of messages. I guess, first off, um, never really expecting that Nursing Week this year would be celebrated the way that we're celebrating it. But I think as we always do as nurses and as reflective practitioners, is really think and try to find silver linings in all of the work that we do. I think that's what keeps us going, particularly when we're in those moments of despair and feeling like everything's closing in around us. You know, you think to yourself, okay, there's something here I know there is. I know we do that as nurses all the time. And I would say that out of this is this today. So out of this, this uh, pandemic and this approach uh, that we have to take in terms of how we're caring for our patients and and working together as a team is that there's actually been a coming together of our teams. And I think we, we can see that um, just in, in what's being organized here for us today. 
Um, it's ironic, uh, Andrew, that you chose the topic of connectedness. We were texting or emailing last night because in my daily email that I've been sending out this week to the nurses trying to keep us connected as nurses during nursing week, which I've never done that in the past, but felt a real need to do it this year uh, to keep us connected. My topic of the day was connected. And, um, and it just so happened that that's the topic of this round. So Natalia, I want to thank you and, uh, and, um, and acknowledge you coming uh, to Trillium Health Partners today and to 3A at our Mississauga site. Um, I know that you're not a stranger to the organization and want to thank you for your um, your commitment and advocacy. And of course, uh, uh, the RNAO, uh, of our partner in uh, in moving our profession forward, I want to thank you for being here as well, Carol. And, and please bring our, um, our greetings back to Doris. I know that she would love to have been here today. So thanks, Andrew. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Um, uh, Dr. Brethren, can you, are you there? Are there? Can you hear us okay? Would you like me to say a few words? Please. Okay, good, good afternoon. And I'm Angela Cooper Bratway, the president of RNAO. And on behalf of RNAO, I want to wish you a happy nursing week. The year of the nurse 2020, which in commemoration of Florence Nightingale's birthday, we are celebrating. And again, it was designated the year of the nurse and the nurse midwives. And I would like to say, I thank you for who you are and what you've done. And when I say who you are as nurses, you are compassionate, caring, diligent, self, selfless persons working to provide competent care for clients and patients throughout the year and throughout the ages, I would say, if you go right back to Florence. I want to thank you also for what you've done during this COVID-19 pandemic, you have given of yourselves to patients and their families, forgetting about yourselves and your family. Some of you are, are working in situations where you are facing patients who are suffering with the COVID-19, and yet you do your work from day to day with joy, caring for people. And we are nurses because we care, we have, given our, we have dedicated our lives to caring for people, and regardless of what obstacles, we make it. Even if in inclement weather, whether there's an outbreak, whether there's a SARS, whether there's a COVID, you're there at the bedside, you're there in administration, providing leadership and support for the staff. So have a happy nursing week. And I look forward to seeing you face to face without social distancing. So God bless and enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sorry, Andrew. This is PG from RNAO. Doris sent me a message that she would like me to read um, to everyone here. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Um, so Natalia and Michelle, my apologies. I was looking forward to join you at the Take Your MPP to work today, but I was called to an urgent meeting with the Chiefs of Ontario. Michelle, Natalia, colleagues and friends at Trillium Healthcare, I send you my love and thank each and every one of you as leaders and a giant hug and thanks to the RNs, NPs and RPNs that work at Trillium for their formidable work. Yesterday, we lost one of our own, Brian Baiti, an expert, an expert mental health RN who worked at Kensington Village. Brian would tell us, keep going and to honor him, we must. Colleagues, please accept RNAO's accolades for your work and my personal love from Doris. Thank you very much. Natalia, are, are you there? Are you able to hear us? Okay. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi there. You... Welcome. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, uh, happy Nursing Week. It is a wonderful week uh, to celebrate the accomplishments and contributions to reg of registered nurses, nurse practitioners, uh, registered practical nurses, as well as nursing students to our healthcare system. Um, it is so important to recognize the work that we do as, as nurses, uh, but especially during this difficult time of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Um, I myself, I'm a registered nurse and I am so proud. I am so proud that I have chosen this profession but it, because it is one of the most rewarding professions that, that, that are out there. And we truly make a difference in patients' lives each and every day. And so uh, I do currently work at Etobicoke General Hospital in the emergency room. And uh, last Sunday, I actually had a shift in our COVID unit, which is a new unit uh, established to house some of our long-term care patients that are uh, being transferred from long-term care um, because, uh, as you know, uh, staff are uh, overwhelmed and some of our long-term care facilities are experiencing uh, a lot of shortages. And so I, I had a bit of a taste of what nurses uh, go through when we are dealing with patients who are COVID positive. And as you know, in a COVID uh, unit, all patients are COVID positive. And so it was a, an extreme mental challenge for me uh, every time I went into the patient's room to be thinking about upper order of putting on PPE and then taking it off, making sure that I'm not exposing my colleagues, uh, you know, to, to the infection, etc. And so, um, and it was itchy and it was sweaty and, uh, and it was one of the hardest shifts I've ever worked in the emergency room. Uh, and unfortunately, we also had a death of a patient. Uh, he passed away from COVID-19. It was an older gentleman, 82 years old, and I was the only person in that room. And, um, and so I really got a taste of, of how uh, nurses are directly impacted and affected by this pandemic. And, you know, I just have to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because you are truly doing God's work. You're truly, you know, uh, there for the patients with compassion. You make such a big difference in their care and their experience. And especially during time of COVID, when we have a no visitor policy and um, you are the only face of humanity or one of the only f human interactions that these patients are having. And it's so important, uh, the work that we do, because we are there for our patients 24 seven. We are the practitioners who spend the most uh, direct face to face time with our patients. And so uh, I cannot thank you enough. Um, you are brave, you are strong, you inspire me every day. When I go on my shift, I always learn something uh, from, from my colleagues uh, and especially during time of COVID, Things are changing so fast. Uh, I can relate to the fact that every time I go into my unit, there's a new protocol, a new policy, there's a change. And so we are such adaptable human beings. We're so flexible. Um, some The colleagues that I've met are some of the most incredible uh, people that I've um, met in my life. And I'm just uh, so proud. I'm so proud to be a member of this profession. And yes, 2020 is the year of the nurse. And, uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't know, I guess God planned it that way uh, that, uh, you know, he, he threw a challenge at us and, uh, and we are responding to that challenge. And of course, um, it was devastating to hear about the death of, of one of our own. Um, and uh, my heart goes out to their family. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we have to do better as, uh, as a government and as uh, institutions, we have to do everything we possibly can to ensure we protect our healthcare workers with the proper uh, personal protective equipment, with the proper protocols, and with the proper supports. And so, um, you know, one death is one too many. So let's make sure we work together to make sure that, uh, you know, we can minimize the amounts of deaths from uh, frontline workers. So once again, on behalf of Premier Ford and the entire team, uh, I want to thank you uh, and keep up the wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Natalia. Thank you, Natalia. Um, so, so uh, welcome everyone, and, and thank you again for, for uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us here on Korea Medicine. So, the, the topic for today, to build on what Catherine was saying, is connection, and, uh, and specifically resiliency through connection. So, uh, one of the topics we spoke about earlier was family, um, and the challenges that this is presenting um, when we have young children at home who may not understand the challenges that we're going through, or uh, parents or grandparents who are at risk. Um, or the impact that it's having on our family. We had, you know, a couple of staff members return to work today, um, and, and I know that's been really challenging for for all of us. Um, and so the topic for today is resiliency through connection. Um, and I'm so excited that Jeff is here. Um, so over the next um, uh, 20 20 minutes or so, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Jeff to to speak to us a little bit about um, what connection means. I know that. When we spoke uh, last week, it, it introduced me the, the, the concept of horizontal connection, connection with others, connection with, with pets, with you know, material items that you know, provide us a sense of purpose and joy uh, and help us be resilient. And then also vertical connection, so a, a faith-based or religious-based connection. And, and I think you know, we're all somewhere on that grid somewhere. Um, so really excited, Jeff. Thank you so much for coming. Very good. Um, 
and actually, we always are connecting in one way or another, as as uh, Andrew is describing it, but horizontally. Uh, and and even the hermit in the old stories gets someone that brings him food. It's not it's not as though uh, it's even possible for any of us to be entirely disconnected alone. Uh, there are multiple ways. Rachel and I were talking just a little bit ago before we came up here about, you know, and actually the different ways in which we may experience a vertical sensibility. And, and that vertical sensibility actually may be very horizontal. It may be connected more with how am I, how am I located, how am I grounded in this creation, in this world, more than how do I connect with uh, some kind of, of God, some kind of spirit. So I'm, when we talk about vertical, there are all kinds of different understandings that each of us bring with that. And, and actually with the closing reflection, I'll go into that a little bit more. But I think the question to start out with is really where and how uh, do we find that, where, where do you find that sense of connection or are you finding that sense of connection right now? You know, is it, I know actually for some of you it's right here, it's with, with people that you're working with all the time. Uh, others, you know, kids do that, uh, that, that our children are uh, a sense in which, uh, are the place in which we feel a real, a real sense of being in a sense at home. But the, you know, for each of us, it's, it's a unique experience. And wondering how uh, how you're how you're experiencing that sense of connection, and 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 maybe where are you missing it right now? Because that's that I think is is maybe the more crucial piece in terms of resilience, because our resilience comes out of that sense of how we are grounded, how we are connected. So. Any, any of you find that sense of grounding in particular places? Um, I would like to say, good um, evening, everyone. Um, so, when we talk about the grounding and the connection and the resilience from two perspectives, for me personally, it's um, the horizontal, sorry, the vertical connection, which, is, which I get from. Um, spiritual connection on a daily basis. Um, so this morning, I know we're going to have all of this and um, this morning I was just doing my uh, Bible words meditation and this word popped up, thou shalt speak boldly, which is from Acts. Um, so I was just going to give some thoughts actually. I wrote it down and it's okay to just read up with you. Uh, being a nurse is not about grace, it's about being who you are. No book can teach you how to cry with your patients. No class can teach you how to tell their family that their loved ones have died or dying. No professor can teach you how to find that dignity in providing care especially to end of, uh, patients with end of life care. A nurse is not about the pills or the charities. It's about being able to care for people when they are at their weakest moments. Salute to all the nurses who put their lives at risk to save someone else's. So these were my thoughts last night. Um, and the spiritual connection, um, it makes me be liberated from fear and anxiety. When the whole pandemic started, um, I, I did have a fear because I have someone who's very new compromising. I had that discussion with Andrew and um, I pondered over it and I said, I'm not going to go on like this. So I have to go to work and be able to carry on my duty um, with that commitment and due diligence, not with fear, but with the um, great. So, uh, so I've managed to overcome that fear. 
So I come and I have a good time and uh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Andrew for being a pillar of support to me and medicine. And to Kathy, I'm missing Kathy. And it's all my team. Thank you. Okay, uh, to let you know, I'm a COVID survivor. Yeah. So I, was, I think I was uh, off for almost a month. Yeah. So my connections is vertical and horizontal. Yeah, first one, of course, is God. So I just always pray. I was on isolation for two weeks just in my room. Yeah. So I, I, what I do, I just pray and then vertical. This is what it's hard not to be able to hug you. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. My family is in my course. And Drew respects me. Yeah. And also my sister and my friend who's also a nurse in my neighborhood. Yeah, they're the ones who's doing our groceries. Because my husband was supposed to come and take up her name. So we're all like on quarantine. Yeah. So like, sometimes they text me a lot, but I couldn't really reply to them because when you're sick, you have no energy. You just want to lay down and then that's it. At first, I was my feelings. I was so mad because I should be here not being sick. So I was I was questioning myself. What did I do wrong? How come I got the COVID? I did everything, you know, mask and you know gloves, but I still like you know, not to talk to it. So I was really mad at myself. I said I should be you know, working instead of just you know at home. And then uh, after that, you know, I I. I I just realized, you know, I have to just pray and and uh, you know, and uh, my families are amazing, my coworkers are amazing. A lot of messages I'm telling you every day. I just sometimes I, I just feel so say sorry to them if I cannot reply to it because there is a lot in the course. I miss my dog too because I cannot paddle them. So I was just looking up the window when they go up the backyard. For two weeks. Yeah, I would feel so crazy. And I was just like, you know, calling them by the window. And of course, my little one, my little dog is just like, you know, wants to come up, you know, so that I'm upstairs. And he was like, you know, barking all the time. And yeah, and, uh, yeah that was, well, it was tough, uh, you know, situation for me because. You know, you get um, anxious. I couldn't sleep at night because when I sleep and then when I wake up, I felt my chest is tight. So what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna sit and don't sleep at all. Yeah. It's really, yeah. But you know, I survived, so I was thankful also. Maybe because of prayers and guardian and everything. Thank you so much for sharing, Evie. Thank you for having the courage to share that with us. I think one of the. Oh, Bob. Yeah, I know. I feel right. I think one of the. I give children a break. Just for now. Yeah. Um, the, um, one of the things that, you know, having been with this team for six, seven months now, um, within my first hours, days, you know, you can sense the cohesiveness of this team. And I think. Um, uh, I think it's, even you having the courage to do to share that with us, I think um, I know it's really tough, and, and um, I, I, I know that you know this is why we have these conversations, right? Because it's it's clearly very difficult. Um, and then I know from from being here, you know, while you're away, while others were away, you know, it, it's it's a it's a constant conversation here, right? You know, thinking of others and and wanting to reach out and support, while also 
you know, trying to uh, provide you know, um, whatever it is that they need. And, and it's really, it, it's, it's tough. I, I think um, what I'm trying to say is that the cohesiveness in this team and the connection that we have with one another, I think is in my career, something that I haven't really experienced anywhere else, to be honest. I think it's something that's really unique to this team. Um, and I'm just so grateful and thankfully that you're comfortable sharing with that, sharing that. And, and um, I think that's just a great example of what, you know, our, our resilience and our strength throughout the year. Oh, Shannon, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Hi, Shannon. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. First of all, I just want to thank you for that story. You know, you really, um, you really moved me and uh, I'm sure the whole team. So thank you for having the, the courage to share that. I think uh, speaking about connection today is just so relevant in a place that really truly believes and lives <clears throat> that we are better together. Um, <clears throat> I've been a nurse for a long time and um, these stories are so important for us to share and, and be together, especially in a time of celebration around Nurses Week. Uh, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of our special guests. Uh, Natalie, so nice to meet you virtually and to hear your story. You're truly modeling the way for those of us in this profession. <clears throat> to RNAO and Angela, thank you for the greetings and words of support and encouragement. Catherine, you're inspiring as always and uh, thank you for being for us with us on 3A today and for your greetings and words of support and encouragement. Um, Andrew, your spirit of celebration is so needed right now and uh, just so appreciative that you pulled this together. And to 3A, you know, you're just an awesome team. I think Andrew really said it. It's a, it feels like such great connection uh, being with all of you. So thank you for everything you do and happy nursing. Thank you, Shannon. Welcome. Thank you, Shannon. 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 Thank you,
some that you, you know, personally go to um, that helps you, again, feel sort of a sense of joy or um, distraction, purpose, anything like that that you'd like to share? I can share something. <laughs> Please, yeah. Go for it. So, um, so a good way for me to connect with my friends and, and to, for, you know, for, to improve my own mental health and, and sort of uh, feel better, uh, we started doing these uh, Zoom workouts where we spontaneously, we have a group on WhatsApp and spontaneously when one of us feels like working out, uh, we, we send a message and then we connect through Zoom and we do like a 30 minute or a 20 minute um, uh, work out together and it, it's been so great we actually work out more than we used to because we don't have to drive to the gym and we just stay at home but it, it's such a nice way to connect um, you know and get some physical activity done as well and and also we found that we you know uh, we're talking more to each other over the phone and and just sharing our stories and you know some of my friends who have babies I hear the babies cry or the door the dogs barking in the background but you know what it's been such an enlightening experience and so I highly highly recommend uh, zoom workouts <laughs> and you make a good point too because there there are some uh, really good psychological connections between exercise and just different ways of thinking of using our our, our brains and, and and the way way in which we are that that moving opens up some different channels that way it sounds like you're finding that absolutely well exercise uh, releases endorphins the happiness hormones and we all need them and so this is just one way to get to get them I know for me, it's getting out into the trees. So like a good walk in the trees or in the forest, there's just some sort of energy that comes from nature and a forest. And I think that I know when, you know, we've had a tough day and you get home and you think, well, I just don't want to go for a walk. But sometimes that fresh air, you know, getting into that nature really helps to, you know, keep you going. And on your days off, we make a point. Actually, my family started saying, are you sure you don't have to work today? Because I'm like, I can't stay <laughs> You know, they roll their eyes, but uh, they all get out there and they're troopers and uh, everybody does feel better after. And so just that connection kind of to our earth is really important for me. Thanks. I have a story. <laughs> so uh, six weeks ago when this all started, um, my daughter was on her way to Canada from Germany where she's lived for the last 10 years. And she was coming with our granddaughter who, um, those of you who know me well, I've um, been waiting for a while to be a grandmother, so I was very excited. But when she arrived, she had to self-isolate, obviously, because she had traveled internationally. And um, I was working in the hospital, and so I was very worried about being in the same house. So I moved out for three weeks. I had the opportunity to take advantage of a friend who had a condo that was empty. So I moved out. And um, she was at home with my husband and her sister, and um, they were having a really nice visit, and I was feeling really good about that because I knew that they, they were connected. And then um, I was able to move back home after the 14 days, and I was able to connect with my granddaughter for a few weeks before they had to go back to Germany. So now they've been back to Germany for two weeks, and I stay connected to that baby, and I feel that that baby is giving me a purpose and a why. And I would love Shelly, or Shelly and Paige, who have to watch the little videos every day. That's how it is. <laughs> because I actually think we love it. <laughs> I actually think that that baby is our future, and I, that's what I. When I look at her, I think that's what we're all doing, and we're working towards creating a better future. Even though COVID will be with us for a while, we know that we will come out on the other end because that's what the world does. Whether it's been a war or whether it's been uh, SARS or H1N1 or all of those things that we've lived through and come out on the other side. And so, and so she's the person that I connect with, Jeff. <laughs> that just keep me, Catherine, to one of the other conversations we had was that, the, that there's no real finish line or reference point with this. Like I, I gave the analogy of running a marathon. It's, it, it, it's still really tough, but if you know that you need to run another 15 miles, 10 miles, then you sort of know, okay, maybe I should walk now. Maybe I should take a snack or sit down or something. Great. And without that reference point, it's difficult to make decisions. Um, 
you know, when you don't really know how long this is going to go on for. Um, and so the, the takeaway from that conversation was just always try to prioritize your own um, wellness and, and do, you know, always try err on the side of caution and, and do anything you need to support yourself um, to help you be resilient. Right. That's a, a piece of what you're talking about, Catherine is that it's, it really is someone else that's, that's there. And, uh, and that's, that's always the, the wonderfully strange part about all of this is that when we, when we do things, think for, about ourselves, almost always we're thinking about it in the context of, of other people, sometimes as close as a grandchild, you know, that's wonderful. And sometimes more broadly, more, more widely, So I know that, um, I'm just having a quick look at the clock slide. Jeff, maybe I'd like to transition to the next um, part of our, of our day today, but I, I just want to, um, just to share that I, I think um, just takes away from this conversation and really trying to sustain some of the strategies to help us feel connected day after day, week after week. It's, I think it's less about you know, the big gesture that's done and more just about you know, saying good morning um, to folks, you know, in the morning, or just like little things that, um, that and, and you know, in my experience, um, just the little things, and you don't really know the impact that they're having, but you know, I think we're all going through challenges, and I think it's you can always assume that that you know we're all having unique challenges and experiences, and so um, I know that you know one of the things that is really important to me, and I know to us going forward, is to really try to sustain some of the things that we've been doing already to help us feel connected and, and give us that sense of purpose and joy and. Um, and comfort again throughout this uncertain time and, and, and you know, whatever. Great. Okay, so you'll you'll you may recall if you were here a couple weeks ago that we did that, that Jeff um, um, sort of guided us through uh, a prayer or a, um, a sort of a connection exercise that was really the feedback was incredible, um, really really good. So we wanted to invite uh, Jeff um, um, uh, back again today. Thank you. Thanks, Angel. And actually, you know, I worry about buildups like that. <laughs> but what, a place that I started this week as we were talking about connections and resilience is uh, it goes back 40 years now to a book that Norman Cousins, who some of us who are old enough will, will remember. But I think it's important. I am a single cell in a body of 4 billion the body is humankind. He was talking, as I said, four decades ago, half the world population now has. I am a single cell. My needs are individual, but they are not unique. I am interlocked with other human beings and the consequences of our actions, thoughts, and feelings. As I was thinking about that, I, I wonder, uh, how many of you may have seen a, a real Zen garden? How many of you? Are, is there anyone here that, that has? Well, if you will, imagine something like a large swimming pool that is filled with coarse stones, coarse uh, pebbles, and some sand. And that, that swimming pool-like space is filled, is, is raked every day into ripples that look a little bit like waves. And in the midst of all of that stone, there are usually three or four large, large rocks, large stones that stick up out of that space. They, they stand out in some ways like, um, like giants that are, yes, they're connected by gravel, but they are there seemingly apart at the same time. It's strange in some ways to think about a place like that here, that place of serenity, which is anything but what this space is. I mean, I think for many of you, for most of you perhaps, this hour is perhaps the most serene, the most peaceful, that you experience during your shifts here. So 
to invite you into that space probably feels a little bit strange in this place. It got me to wondering when, if ever, we can hold that deep place of peace, that place that's so still and so patient that a Zen garden can give to us. Where can we find that? And I ask that particularly because what are the questions that are grabbing us these days? And, and, and in the anxieties that you were talking about, and in fact, the groundedness, but in the anxieties you were talking about, it's what do I do when I feel lonely and apart? I'm separated. Uh, when do my fears overtake me? Or when can I stop running? Or can I stop running at all? When will all of this mania, this madness, this whatever you want to call it, end? And in some sense, we ask that question and we know that that's not going to be the case. It's going to take a different shape. Our lives are going to take a different shape. And, and in that, I have a different, slightly different question for us all. And you were speaking about it, actually. And that is, where is the grace or the gift that sometimes allows us to practice that sense of being, that sense of being settled, of being of finding a grounding for ourselves. What I want you to do is to bring your imagination out, and I'm going to practice not very good physical distancing. All right, this one. This one. I can't see everything. Everyone's washing their hands, though, right? Shannon. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. The minute, the minute, yes. Yes. And no touching your face until your hands are washed. That's right. Th thank you. Just worrying from afar here. Yes. And virtual stones for those who are from, from afar. Thank you. As I said, good imagination now, but are you one of the pebbles or are you one of those large rocks? Which are you? Are you one or the other? Are you both? Are you neither? Whether you're the pebble or the large rock, how do you feel isolated? at this time. If you're a great stone embraced by that carefully raked gravel, held by that kind of divine dirt of life, how do you feel that support of others around you? And if you're the gravel, that glue that continually links us all together, 
how do you feel like pebbles acting as solid ground for everything else? We all fit in there somewhere. We all connect in one way or another somehow. And what I want you to do in just a few moments of silence is to reflect upon, to offer a soft prayer, perhaps, but anyway, to, to move beyond self and to bring to mind someone who you know, who is hunkering down, who's isolated, who's feeling hard done by today. And I'm sure that we all know someone in that setting. That one of the important things, and, and a number of you have mentioned it, is the ways in which we ripple out, the ways in which we connect with one another. And to use a different image, but it's a set of words that, that's thoughts that At times our own light goes out and is rekindled by the spark of another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. We all know that flame. We've all experienced that time when our light has gone out. We all take time to turn with gratitude toward those who do rekindle our sense of being, our sense of life. And so in this small stone, be it a large stone or one of those pebbles that take up this crown, this world, may you know that connection and may you know that thanksgiving, that gratitude that comes from that connection. So you have experienced that in this space, something to be grateful for and something to give to. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, and again, I just, I'm sort of coming back to I think it's something that uh, is unique to our team and something that I'm so grateful for um, is this team. Um, and I'm so excited um, and, and, and sort of reflecting back on all that we've accomplished together and, and how far we've come and, and what we've accomplished and what the future looks like. I'm, I'm so appreciative and grateful for that everyone's back and that, uh, you know, we're in good health. Um, and, and, you know, you can sort of sort of sense when, you know, Eden and Chova and, Natalie, so when you come back, you can sort of, it's, it's nice to sort of feel back, sort of as it, you know, back together again. Um, and really excited about, um, you know, our next, uh, our future together. Um, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, which, uh, uh, we'd just like to um, sort of uh, turn to some closing remarks now. Um, Dr. Rathray, can you, can you address, is there anything um, just that you'd like to share just before we, we close up. Just want to thank our MPP and colleague, Natasha, I couldn't have her first name, for sharing her stories. I want to thank every one of you for sharing your stories. And stories are very powerful. They get their messages across. And it's stories are universal to different cultures from across the globe. And I really enjoy hearing your stories and how it helps you to survive during this difficult time. And I too have a story. I lost my niece who lives in New York due to COVID. She died on April the 2nd, the Sunday. She was talking to everyone, very happy. She was be expected to be discharged on the Monday. And on Monday morning, they told us she was dead. I did not have the opportunity to visit her in the States because, you know, the borders are closed. 
And of course, she did not have a usual burial because of the number, large volumes of people who had died in New York City. Her body remained in the morgue until the 22nd of April. And then on the 28th of April, she was cremated and her son was able to collect her ashes. So I know what it is to experience this. And I would say this is my fourth pandemic. My first pandemic was as a young nurse in 1972 going through poliomyelitis. Unfortunately for me, I was immunized against polio and all the other nurses who were redeployed to the outpatient department to vaccinate people against poliomyelitis. And we were using the Sabin vaccine, which was given orally, fortunately for us. But we were all separated from our families. We stayed in the nursing hostel for about three to four months until the whole population was vaccinated against that disease. And then I went through SARS in 2003. And I was working in public health at that time. And I know what it is not knowing enough about the disease, not having a vaccine, which was a different story from being in the Caribbean. Just as it is with COVID, unknown, there are so many unknowns and we're learning more about it. And I think the COVID is more infectious than SARS. So I want to say, I did go through pandemic H1N1 in 2009 as well, but I, there was a difference. With H1N1, there was a vaccine. This COVID-19 and SARS share a lot in similarities because there are no specific treatments, there are no vaccines, and we have to take those necessary precautions. If we don't, we know those precautions save lives. If we don't take those precautions, people will die. And I commend you and I praise you for the work that you do and being able to connect with one another and your families, even by phone or emails, and to the courage you demonstrate in by caring for people who are diagnosed with COVID. God bless you, keep you safe in his care. And I want you to remember, I pray for the healthcare providers every day that they will be safe, they would have the wisdom and the strength to make the best decisions for themselves, their families, and their patients. So enjoy the rest of your nursing week. God bless. And remember, I am praying for you every day. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And first of all, my condolences, Angela, uh, for your loss. Um, it's an extremely difficult time and my heart goes out to you and your family. And thank you for sharing and uh, for sharing your testimonials, um, your courage um, and determination. Um, you know, and it, it sort of made me pause and reflect, you know, in my day to day life, I'm, I'm very busy running around all the time. Um, in my work as an MPP, in my work as a nurse, but today you made me sit here for an hour and reflect. And so that's very, very powerful. And it gave me a lot of perspective on, on my own uh, thoughts and my own reflections on COVID-19 and, and my own journey with patients who are affected by this. Um, so thank you for sharing that because uh, I, I would, I, I, I'm not sick with COVID-19, but now I can, re I can uh, appreciate what patients go through from, from that perspective. So, so thank you very much. Uh, one thing I just wanted to mention really quickly is that I've introduced a Mississauga Center Award of Excellence, a Nursing Award for Excellence. And so if you know of a nurse uh, that you'd like to nominate, please send that information to my office. Um, I can share that with your unit. Uh, so my name's Natalia Kusendova, if you just Google me and, uh, and send a nomination for a wonderful nurse to, to my office, uh, we will be uh, having some awards uh, on Monday. Um, and so, so I encourage you to share it with your colleagues uh, as a means of celebrating the wonderful work that our nurses do. Um, so in conclusion, thank you so much for the incredible work you do each and every day. Um, keep it up and, uh, and God bless. Thank you very much. Yeah. Shannon, Shannon, can you hear us?
Yes, no, uh, just a heartfelt thank you. Uh, I, I won't repeat myself, but just uh, everyone take care of yourselves. Make sure you wash your hands. Uh, thank you so much for social distancing today. You get to eat the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Don't put them back. Yeah. Don't put them back. And don't like, give them to anybody else. <laughs> there you are. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for, for your contribution today. And um, thank you to absolutely everybody that's contributed today and for the courage to share your stories. Um, and I think what I would take away after listening uh, to Dr. Braithwaite and uh, Natalia and Shannon and everybody, everyone who shared, is that everybody has a story. Everybody has something that's happening with them uh, related to this period in our history. And, um, and take the time to talk to each other about those st stories. Some of them will some, some, in some way feel small to the point that you're making a, a little pebble. And some of them around what you've lived through are, are big rocks. But it really is through our sharing and connectedness with each other as nurses. I'll highlight nurses in particular this week, but also as teams coming together that we become stronger and richer. So just really continue to tell your stories and talk to each other. It brings a lot of, it brings out a lot of, um, of strengths in ourselves as we learn how to support each other at this time. And Andrew, I cannot say enough about uh, your organization of today. Whoever would have thought uh, in a million years that we would have take your MPP and RNAO um, and 3A and Global and, uh, and everybody here um, uh, doing what we're doing today, which is, uh, which is just so amazing. But, your leadership in bringing it all together. Thank you very much. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to everyone uh, who joined on Zoom and Catherine. It means the world to us and Shelly, you as well. That I know that this is um, you know, probably <laughs> one of your busiest weeks of the year. And, and, and you taking an hour out of your time to be here with us, we're just so grateful. So thank you very well, much. Well, I got to take a page out of Natalia's book. This is the longest I've stood in <laughs> for a very long time. So yes. I actually thank you yes. because I was able to totally, as my kids would say, Mom, could you just pay attention? <laughs> so I was able to pay attention. So thank okay. you. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.